Hello, I'm going to take just the next five minutes or so to talk about atoms, elements and isotopes. So here's a simple picture of an atom. As you can see it in the, in the middle, in the nucleus, it has two protons and two neutrons. And far away from the nucleus, there are another two electrons. So what this shows is that in the nucleus we have the protons and the neutrons and outside the nucleus electrons. This happens to be a picture of an atom of helium. All helium atoms contain two protons. And I should point out in terms of charge, protons have, a, have one positive charge, neutrons have no charge, electrons have one negative charge. Here's another atom. Uh, if you count up the protons, electrons and neutrons, you'll find that protons there are 6, electrons 6, but this time the neutrons, if you count them up, you'll find that there are 8. Now in any neutral atom, the number of electrons and the number of protons will always be equal because the charges have to cancel out. However, the number of protons and neutrons may not be equal. They may be, they may be the same, they may be similar, but they, may, they do not have to be the same. So we can summarize that in these two sentences here. And this atom with six protons in the nucleus is a picture of an atom of carbon. Now, the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom is called the atomic number. And all atoms of any one element have the same number of protons. So all atoms of carbon, for example, have six protons in, in their nucleus. If it doesn't have six protons in the nucleus, it's not carbon. All atoms of hydrogen, for another example, have only one proton in their nucleus. All atoms of oxygen, just to take another example, have eight protons in every nucle in the nucleus of every atom. Or to look at it another way, atoms of different elements have different numbers of protons in the nucleus. And this idea of atomic number is absolutely fundamental to chemistry. The periodic table of elements lists elements in order of atomic number. In other words, of in order of the number of protons in the nucleus of every atom. So we can see from this periodic table that all of the elements have a number from 1 through to, in this example, 114. And these numbers are atomic numbers for each of the elements and the atomic number corresponds to the number of protons in the nuclei of every atom of that particular element. I want to say a little bit about the mass of subatomic particles, the mass of protons, neutrons and electrons. Now these particles are so tiny that we can't conveniently use a unit like grams to give their mass. So what we do is use a unit called the Atomic Mass Unit, or AMU. And using the Atomic Mass Units, we say that protons have, have a mass of 1 AMU, neutrons have an equal mass of 1 AMU, but electrons are so tiny, so much smaller than the others, that we don't give them a mass in this system. And we can define a quantity called the mass number. And the mass number is defined as the number of protons plus the number of neutrons for any atom. Let's think about an element which has atoms containing six protons and six neutrons. What element is that? Six protons must be atomic number of six. Atomic number of six, you will find in the periodic table, is an atom of carbon. Now most of the carbon around us is, is like this. Most of the carbon atoms around us 
have six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons, but not all. Some have six protons, six electrons, but eight neutrons. It's still carbon, but it's not the same. We call this one carbon 12, because it has a mass number of 12, and therefore this the one at the bottom, mass number of 14, is called carbon 14. And these two different atoms are called isotopes of carbon. So this idea of isotopes is an important one for us. It's important to be clear that isotopes of an element have the same number of protons and electrons, but different numbers of neutrons. And isotopes are very useful in different areas of science. The carbon-14 isotope, which we spoke about a moment ago, for example, is useful in what is called radiocarbon dating, which is particularly important in archaeology. So, just in summary, these are the important ideas from this little talk.